I could use I could use some random questions right about now. <laughs> Favorite bands in my of, of my life? Um, well, the band that ins- kind of inspired the drums to to become a band, there were two two bands. One was the Shangri Las, which is a '50s girl group um, from America, and the second um, is a band called The Wake, um, and specifically. It's not even The Wake's discography. It's like one song that makes me love The Wake, and it's called Pale Spectre. And I think it's one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard in my life. Um, so, yeah. And then I really uh, love uh, Bjork, and I really love this artist, Meat Computer, who's doing really cool work right now. A random fact of my new album, it was written in two different cabins one is was a small cabin that i own in upstate new york in the woods and the other was in california in los angeles um up in the hills of uh like highland park also another tiny little uh cabin space so it's my cabin record i think if i had to only eat one thing for the rest of my life it would be spaghetti bolognese because it's so delicious and even though my childhood was painful um you know we would my my mother would make bolognese like well she just call it like meat sauce (laughs) and um and so when i eat it i kind of you know there's that nostalgia that childhood like when you have ice cream it reminds you of being a kid maybe that's why people as adults still love ice cream and sweets maybe um yeah But here's the thing I have to say about my favorites. It's like, I don't really believe in favorites. It's like why I don't get tattoos because I don't like things that are final like that. You know, like my whole life is like swirling and one day I love one movie and the next day I don't really like that movie anymore. And, and then I like it again for a different reason, you know? So favorites, I'm happy to answer these questions. It's fun for me to, to answer them, but just know that maybe tomorrow all my answers will be different. Mm. Well, so I've only played the whole album through once. Um, opening or the release day, we uh, we played in a cemetery in Los Angeles, the whole album um, from front to back. And I think for me, um, I'm really loving this song on the album called Be Gentle, which is kind of a theme on the album of of like not being so hard on myself, not being so angry, like finding ways to be soft and gentle and then also requiring that of people around me towards me, like be gentle with me, be gentle with my spirit. And I want to be gentle with you. It's like things softening. And I also like, you know, this is maybe the only part of the album that references something that's been in drums music for a long time, which is sort of that 1950s ballad, like down by the water, you know, like it has that sort of quality to it. And um, as I get older, I like singing slower songs much more than I like singing the fast ones. <laughs> so maybe uh, like as the drums progress, you're just going to get all ballads the next album, you know? Okay, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about a food artist that I love um, who is Mexican, grew up in Mexico City. And her name is Isabel Cos, And she is one of my chosen sisters. Um, I have a chosen family. Um, because I had to leave my uh, birth family and find love in this world. And she is part of that. And, um, and she has, I'm actually really happy for her because she's been, she taught herself how to make pastries in Mexico city. And then she moved to New York and kind of built a career as a pastry chef. And she's just now been, um, listed at the food and wines top 10 chefs of the year so she's my favorite mexican artist right now it feels beautiful you know it is like uh it's the fruits of a lot of healing and self-exploration and self-understanding um i think there's wisdom in this album there's curiosity there's pain there's joy it's like the whole human experience and it's my human experience so I see this album as like um, a rebirth for the drums um, and for me. And um, in a lot of ways, it feels like my debut album, like to me. Um, 
I feel like uh, a new person and a new artist in a way. And this album feels new to me. Um, so it, it feels, it feels like in a way, because I've just learned who I am, it's like actually finally after 15 years, truly revealing myself to the world. And there's something very beautiful about that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a delicate subject. You know, it's very sensitive. And I think that um, those lyrics, probably uh, a lot more people relate to those lyrics than, than maybe we'll ever admit it. You know, that we, you know, we all have these insecurities um, about our bodies, about safety, about exp expressing ourselves. Um, and... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that song is, uh, actually that was the hardest song to write for the album. It was, it was the hardest by far. I think my body didn't want me to write it because it wanted to stay in a place of just protecting itself. So I would like finish it and then it wouldn't be right. And then I'd go back and change things and then I'd go back and change things again. And then I brought it to a co-producer and I was like, help me with this. I never do that with songs. Help me do this. And then we kind of rebuilt the whole thing and then I went back to the original and then I changed it again and finally I just said this just has to be done <laughs> you know but I think there's something because it's maybe the most sensitive or maybe the most taboo or the most scary thing to talk about of all the things I talked about on the album I think like I was sabotaging the recording process like without knowing it to slow the process down you know to rest to rest i think like to be gentle and to rest i just i so wish that that those younger versions of myself could have experienced like rest and calm um and they didn't get to so now i'm doing a lot of that and i'm finding ways to to uh to rest you know i'm working today but i know that later i'm gonna have some quiet time and I was never like that before. And so I think when I'm resting, they're resting too. Um, ignore what's going on and shut everything out and just follow your heart. Um, be on your own little raft in the river. If you see a big boat with a lot of different artists on it, all kind of on the same boat, don't get on it. You can go over and talk to them for a minute, but stay on your raft and then kind of... You know, like do your own thing. Like you're, we're all so such unique individuals, but then we learn to shed our uniqueness because we want so badly to fit in, and then we become kind of bland, watered down versions of ourselves. And so I think it's really important to be proud of like your uniqueness and, and lean into it. Even like, whoa, I'm a freak. Like I'm gonna get freaky, and um. And just know that like you are you are enough you don't need someone else's approval and then i think what happens is when you're more yourself um just naturally people are there's going to be people who aren't going to like you and then there's going to be people that are like he's a freak i love him i love freaks you know and you're going to end up belonging um by following your heart rather than so there's two different things here's the lesson of our interview there's belonging and there's fitting in Fitting in requires shedding who you are to be a part of something, to be a part of a group. But it sucks because they like you for a version of you that you know you're not deep down. And you're also not being yourself. So you're not even like authentic to yourself. So it's a lose-lose. But, but belonging starts with yourself. If you can belong to yourself and, and you can honor who you are, people that like who you are will, will start noticing and gravitate towards you. Because if you're not being yourself and then you're making all of these friends, they're going to be depending on you to be a fake version of yourself. And you may risk losing them if you finally decide to be the genuine version of yourself. So it's really a win-win because you get rid of people that aren't your people and you collect people that are your people by just being who you are. And I'm talking about in real life and as an artist, you know, like be who you are, just do it and stop like looking around. Like this bothers me so much. People, I make a beautiful album and people always go, so who are your greatest inspirations for the album? It feels so rude. It's like, 
as if you're assuming that like I'm deeply inspired by another artist, you know, which I'm not. I'm inspired by all the little micro absorptions of just like everyday life, like, and then it all comes together and it comes out. And like, that's what the art is. It's I'm not going, oh, what is Vampire Weekend doing? Like, maybe I could do something like that over my dead body, especially that band. Yeah. <laughs> Bring a book. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get me started on metronomy. Oh my God. I'd rather eat glass. No, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm finished. Okay, good, good. <laughs> He's like, we'll end on that note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should stop doing it. Stop. I'm, I'm, at the, I'm at the phase where I'm just like dragging other artists. Uh, this We're is, just stirring the uh, This is perfect. <laughs> good. Uh, Bunch of rich kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Johnny, thank you so much for, for the interview. Love thank you. Music. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you love my music, then I feel like you love me, and I appreciate that. Oh, my yeah. God. My name is Johnny Pierce, um, formerly Jonathan Pierce um, of Horseheads, New York. I li now live in New York City. I like men that are tall and have kind of olive skin um, and who really know how to rock me in bed. Um, Thank you so much for this interview. I love you. Mexico, you are so dear to my heart, honestly. And you've really, you've really got me through hard times in my career and in my life and have inspired me to uh, be a better artist, be more authentic, and you give me the courage to really be myself. So thank you.